All right, we're back, everybody. Sorry for taking so long, but we needed to get some coffee and rest up. And we're going to move along in here. There was a... I'm here with my friend Zen, and how you doing, officer? Yeah. Yeah, if the cops were beating up people today, I wouldn't be so friendly, trust me. But they seem to be... They actually seem to be somewhat strained compared to what they could be. So... That's my take on the situation with the police department today, is they could go in and knock heads, but the whole world's watching. So, welcome you back to our live stream here, folks. We're gathered here at Battery Park here in New York City. So, uh, we're getting ready to go on the move here, I guess, here in a little bit. There's a spokes council that's going on over here. And they're going to make decisions about where we're headed and what we're doing. And uh, I could participate, but I'm just going to take a spectator role because I'm live streaming. Can you go in there? No, no, I'm going to I'm going to sit here. It's no big deal. I don't really I don't really think that we should tell the police where we're going because they do follow people's live streams to figure out what's up. So yeah, we're back again. We had our little uh, coffee run, and uh, as you can see, I'm sorry that it was Starbucks, but it was the only place that it was open. It's a beautiful day here in New York. It's about 70 degrees. This, okay. I'm going to go over there in a minute. So when you come back, you can do my stream for me, all right? Uh, why don't you push me over there? And um, when you, you can go in, and then when uh, you come out, you can take over the stream for a couple of minutes, and I'll go in, okay? Nice thing about New York is there are public restrooms here. So, woohoo! Got a nice little crowd. I guess there's about five or six hundred people here. Occupy Wall Street. All right. Huge general assembly going on right now. How you guys doing? We got Tim Cast over here. I'm actually looking for some people, uh, the global rep people, and see if any of those people are down here. City, you should come down to the Occupy and participate in whatever actions they have planned today. I know that uh, Oakland and uh, San Francisco have ex extensive uh, preparations that they're making for their actions. Uh, if you're here in New York, in New York area, come down to Battery Park and join Occupy. Uh, we're getting ready to make a uh, another uh, march to uh, Lower Manhattan. Absolutely lovely day out today, though. Great day for protesting. We hope that you enjoyed the uh, 
occupy the stage last night at the Yippie, at the Yippie Cafe. like to uh, chat with me, uh, please log into the social stream and be logged into either Facebook, Twitter, or Ustream. Click on the social stream tab and type something in. I'll be happy to chat with you. If you've got any questions or any concerns you'd like for me to contact somebody out here that's at Occupy, uh, don't be shy. I'll be more than happy to uh, talk with you or anything you need or want. I'm at your service. Spirits are really high here. We haven't really suffered an unusual level of police repression today. Uh, there's been a few arrests that have been made for bogus crap, like uh, some people arrested for tossing uh, casino chips in the street. Crossing the street. Crossing the street. Standing in the street, trying to get onto the sidewalk and off the street. Uh, you guys live in New York City? Long Island. Long Island? Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. Yeah. I came all the way out here from San Francisco to come to come to this. Wow. Right. Oh, uh, about four days now. I, I haven't had a good night's sleep since I've been here. I uh, understand. I've been <laughs> running around. Coffee, oh yeah. Well, this is the only thing that's between me and going back to sleep. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Well, I have a, I have a responsibility to people out in uh, San Francisco. You know, they they want to know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. We we slept for about ten minutes. Yeah, well, I, I did lie down for about an hour. I couldn't sleep. You know, but I'll be here. I got plenty of time. I spent a whole year. I shattered my leg, and uh, I was laid up for a couple of years. And uh, I just got out of the wheelchair pretty much about three, four months ago, where I could walk around, and I can walk around now. Yay! And uh, if I had my mobility, I wouldn't have came out here and trip if I had. And uh, doing a lot better. And uh, it's nice. Uncle Sam has been very generous with me. He actually paid for this trip. Uh, just before I actually had the trip paid for, but um, I get a letter from Social Security. Mr. Sullivan, we miscalculated your benefits, and we owe you an extra $1,700. And I wasn't expecting that money. It was a windfall. So I've been, uh, I actually, um, I had, I brought a couple of people with me here and paid for their accommodations and their and their their tickets and uh yeah well one guy he was money i can think of yeah you know and you know cap bear and whatnot and and my friend zen uh, the guy who's pushing me around um he's got a little baby and he needs money and rather than pay it to uh some corporate entity or whatnot give him the money i like to stand over at his house better anyway because uh you know he lives in like a uh, there's a lot of ravers and stuff that live there and the djs <laughs> So it's real fun to hang out with it, you know, hang out. And uh, so I don't have any complaints whatsoever. <laughs> How long are you staying here? I'll be here till Thursday. Oh, that's right. the rest of your Yeah, it's a really nice show. Yeah. Well, I'm going to uh, take the Chinese bus down to, to uh, Baltimore. That's where I grew up. And go and we're going to go. We got a little crab house thing planned. We're going to go to the crab house and get, get hard crabs. And, <laughs> And uh, that's a Maryland thing, right? Maryland tradition. <laughs> and uh, I get to hang out with my family. I, I went to Johns Hopkins University, so I'm going to go back to my university and and you know. That sounds like a good trip. Yeah, I have fun in Baltimore. Baltimore is a really fun city. Like, yeah, it really is. Fun. It's like the, one of the few cities on the East Coast where you can roll a joint and smoke it on the street, and nobody will ask you about it. Can I ask a question? What is this protest for? Occupy Wall Street. It's about Wall Street. It's about economic inequality here in our country, okay. right? And the fact that 700 people in the world have more wealth than the rest of us 7 billion combined. And our system is sick, and it can't, we can't continue to sustain our way of life if things continue the way they are, because we're, we're, we're our appetite, capitalism's appetite for national, national, natural resources is ravenous, and they, ravenous means they like to eat too much, and uh, 
Uh, it has to be like we have to make a new world and we have to change things. And that's why most people are out here. Yeah. Right. It's about changing society. So we're out here for you too, okay? Right? Everybody. We're here for everyone. No problem. No problem. Where are you guys visiting from? Where are you from? France. France. Okay. What part? Paris. Paris. Okay. Beautiful city. I live in Paris. They live in Bordeaux. They drink wine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm from San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's all right from a distance. Yeah, yeah. Right. When you get up close, then it's got a lot of warts, but it's not a bad place. Right, but I love Paris too. I'll be going to Europe next year. Yeah. Uh, my family's from uh, Nuremberg, Germany. Nuremberg, Germany. So I'm going to be going back for that. So anyway, have a nice trip. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I appreciate it. No problem. Bye bye. For all you viewers out there, that's one of my favorite things to do. I love meeting people from all different places. You know, and everybody knows I'm I. Good for that. Yeah, everybody. Well, it's good to see young young people down here, you know. My mom at first, because she lives in Florida, she was super nervous, and now, like, after after I went and she realized I wasn't going to get, like, raped and maimed and murdered, she started, like, going to people that were a part of her occupations in her state and being like, oh, my daughter is part of that, and wow, like, she's, like, happy about it. Now. That's good. Yeah, my parents, well, my parents are in their 70s, and I've been, a, you know, at it since I was 11 years old, and, uh, so uh, they pretty much know, you know, they don't they don't mind, you know. And uh, I had a big argument with my sister recently um, because she was posting anti-Obama stuff that was like kind of racist, like um, it had like stuff about welfare, like you know, and get a job. And then my you know, cause we follow you know we're on Facebook. That's how my family stays in contact with each other. And my sisters. Yeah, we're gonna keep our eyes peeled. Uh, it's been a rest all day. All morning. I will. I'm my guy. Definitely, I'm not gonna turn my back on the police department for one minute. But uh, what was I saying here? What were we talking about? Oh yeah. And uh, uh, she posted something yesterday that says. I wish that we had a better choice of candidates for president. And I was like, you're 100% right. Yeah. <laughs> Two people is not enough. We need to have 10, 20 candidates sure. running at a time. Yeah. And, right. and that's over long. And then it Yeah. <laughs> so I, I made nice with her because I, uh, I was getting ready to tell her not to come down to the crab house. Because, you know, usually when I come into town, you know, I usually uh, front, you know, I usually, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, we get a room, and then I usually pay for it. Right. You know, it's my party for my family, right? And uh, uh, I was about ready to disinvite her this year. Don't come down, you know, because you're, uh, I don't like that racist shit that you're yeah. posting on your fucking Facebook page. Yeah. And, you know, I, I got right back with her about it. I'm like, you know, why are you posting this crap? You know, I said, this is bullshit, no, you know. Right. And if you want real facts, you know, you should come to me. Yeah. Right? And, uh... And, but she's like, she likes to start trouble, you know. And I didn't grow up with her. She's like, she grew up in, uh, my dad was in the service. And my mom was taken away from us because she was mentally ill. And uh, so my dad was going to Vietnam. And he had to put us somewhere. And he had to split up my two sisters and me. So I went with one of my sisters and we went and lived with somebody. And then she, my other sister went and lived with somebody else. And then when my dad got back from Vietnam, he did four years over there. Uh, you know, he could have came back after two, but whatever. It's, you know, whatever. He was a young man. And he who knows what he was thinking. Anyways, uh, when he got back, um, he was not able to get custody of my little sister again because the woman who was taking care of him filed to get custody. And uh, so I didn't grow up with her. and But we managed to... She found me on Facebook. Like, because I didn't, like... You know, I didn't think that she really... She was, like, interested in knowing who I was or anything like that. And it turned out that she was. And then I went out and visited her. And she lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania which is the Pennsylvania Dutch country. And she's kind of conservative and goes to church. 
and you know I'm like I rail against her about that too I'm like you know it's, church is a big friggin waste of time if it makes you feel good well go ahead but I've never been able to find any kind of spiritual satisfaction by going to church no. I get more spiritual satisfaction out of a, a mushroom or a hit of LSD <laughs> right that I would ever get out of going to church I could go to church for uh, ten lifetimes and I still wouldn't get that spiritual <laughs> satisfaction that I've gotten from psychedelics. And it's just too bad that, yeah, it's too bad that the, the, you know, the government hates them because they do wake up, wake people up. Yeah, they really do. They open your mind. So even you if know, good or bad, but that. it's a result. It's made permanent changes in our society, long-lasting changes for uh, like PCs and the computer. The whole personal computer thing was all by people uh, in uh, Santa Cruz, California, that were uh, experimenting with psychedelics. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Bill, or, uh, Steve Wozniak, and uh, what's his name, uh, the guy who just died, Steve Jobs, oh, yeah. and a lot of those early computer pioneers, they were all <laughs> dropping nests and stuff in Santa Cruz, except for Bill Gates. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, Bill Gates didn't. Ideas. Where do you think they come from? Bill Gates is a good way. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's trying to. Uh, uh, his thing funds like uh, I don't know. Somebody was telling me that they believe in eugenics, which is like racial selection, and they believe that uh, human population has to be reduced by eighty percent. So that's a pretty extreme number. Yeah, that's a yeah. Number. Don't turn around just yet. Yeah, just watch the math. <laughs> it's been happening all day. What do you have? Well, when I when it's done, oh, she's done, oh. All right, let's check it out. What is it? What does it say? Huh? It's hurting my head anyway. Oh, you got the mask. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was gonna. I was in when I was in uh, uh, D.C. before I came up here. I was gonna get my hair cut a little bit. Yeah. Not much. Enough to like ends. And, and I was gonna do the uh, anonymous thing with the mustache, right? But I didn't get to the. I didn't get to the stylist and. Because she was out of business, so and I haven't had time since I've been out, and I don't, I don't just trust anybody to, to fuck with my hair, yeah, right? right? It's always like you a know. serious. Thing. I spent like 30 years growing it, right? No time to screw it up now, right? Yeah, and I like my long hair. It's a badge, it's a badge for me of being different, right? Because you know, San Francisco, when you're different, everybody's different there. I was gonna say, I feel like it's hard to be different there. Yeah, it really is. How you doing? Not too bad. How are you doing today? I know from the Yippee. Right, right we met before somewhere. Yeah, they're crazy. 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 So what he's posting on the social stream, log on to Facebook, Twitter, or Ustream, click on the social stream tab, and please let me know uh, what you want me to say, or if I want to you want to see somebody, you want me to ask questions, you want me to go someplace and check it out, um, and I'll be more than happy to try and do that for you. Don't wear your mask. What? Don't wear your mask. Yeah, my first it's against the law. I think it's like two or more in a crowd. And then it's like yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's like yeah. Well, one thing about New York is they don't tear gas people here. They don't shoot rubber bullets at them. Yeah. And that's what we got when we were in Oakland. Tear gas, rubber bullets, stun yeah, grenades. I heard right? They just unleashed. Like they were just trigger happy. Cops in Oakland are really trigger happy. And you know they're out there with these big riot like, I mean it looked like some from fucking Star Wars, right? They all wear that turtle body armor, and you know at least here in New York, you know they're dressed in regular, regular gear. They're like more like San Francisco cops, because in San Francisco they don't wear any special gear other than a bulletproof vest and a helmet. So maybe they have some. They actually have similar tactics. Like in uh, San Francisco, they like to get into a like a phalanx, right, where they're all together, 
with nightsticks. And uh, San Francisco, they don't hesitate to beat people with nightsticks. Uh, batons, police batons. But uh, uh, their violence is the violence in San Francisco is very limited uh, because we have a local and active citizenry, citizenry who does go and complain when the police are off the hook. So, uh, you know, and I did legal support for a number of years too for medical cannabis issues, and uh, and they definitely don't fuck with medical cannabis people anymore. Right. They, right. Not right. I spent a lot of time, right. Uh, in surveillance, right, and I, I, every undercover cop that I, like, I would sit across the street from their, uh, where they would come in, because I knew they had to testify in court, like, so if you sit across the street from where the police building, the police, uh, the Hall of Justice in San Francisco and the court is all in the same building, so if you sit across the street with a telephoto lens, you can get pictures of all the, uh, undercover narcos in San Francisco, so what I started doing was every time I found out that a particular cop uh, arrested somebody for medical cannabis, undercover cop. I would take his picture and I would post it online with a long involved news story that went along with it of why this person was not to be trusted. And uh, I was able to take five uh, undercover officers off the street, right? So, because they couldn't work any, they couldn't work anymore because I, their pictures were everywhere. And I made sure that in all the areas that they worked in, at night I would go up and put posters of them in their pictures so people wouldn't know who they were. So that's how we got them off the street. They didn't want to cooperate with our laws. It was a legal thing too, right? Le legal medical cannabis. They didn't want to cooperate with our laws. Well, then they didn't deserve to be police officers. So, you know, they're supposed to be working for us, not vice versa, right? Yeah. So. But now they... Now we have 100% complete cooperation with the San Francisco Police Department. That's good. Right. And they do respect our medical cannabis rights. And whenever the elections roll around, they come in and kiss our ass because they know they need their votes. Right. <laughs> so that's the way that works in San Francisco. And most, and San Francisco, and most of Cal, uh, Cali is not like that, though. Like, uh, like if you go like just the county next to San Francisco, San Mateo County, if you have cannabis there and you get stopped, they don't, they don't honor the medical cannabis law. Right, and I don't know enough. I don't have enough juice to get. I don't, you know, because that's a different county than San Francisco, and uh, I gotta, I gotta read because I've had, a, I've had a few of my friends have gotten busted, lost all their pot, or taken to jail, right? Um, and then what they do is once they get you in jail, they try to do. Uh, if you have any children or anything like that, they'll try and they'll use uh, child protective services to try and take your children because you're a drug addict. And that's San Mateo County. And that, you know, so. I got people tweeting me. Well, every time I, every time I get a tweet, my phone uh, vibrates because I had to turn off the, uh, yeah, the sound because of not, it, it overwhelms what I'm doing here talking. But uh, you guys should get a, you guys should get a smartphone, right? Get unlimited data plan. Yeah. Start live streaming. Yeah. Right. Spread the word. It's all, it's all right. More the merrier. Um, I'm working on. Uh, I write software too. And I'm working on a, an app for Android that allows people to, to to upload their live streams to my server. So so that way we can get rid of uh, all the commercials. <laughs> so that'll be ready by probably Christmas. Oh wow! So I've been yeah well I got like about nine more days worth of coding to do. And that's like nine days over nine weeks. And what I usually do is I um, I turn off the phone lock the door, and uh, don't have any human contact for a couple of days. Go for it. <laughs> right. And I pop a couple of Ritalin and go to work. Right. And uh, that works for me. And I love, you know, I like computing. It's one of the few jobs that, you know, comes naturally. So how about you visitors, or viewers? Uh, would you like me to go around and do some more interviews? I'm going to leave it up to you, because basically I'm content here to just rest. So if you want me to go around and interview some more people, uh, log on to the social stream and be logged on to Ustream, Facebook, or Twitter, and uh, let me know what you want me to do, because I'll put leave it up to you, because uh, I'd rather sit here and be a, a bump on a log.
And if you don't say anything at all, I'm just going to sit here. How you doing? That was nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Yeah. Very nice talking to you. <laughs> Good luck with everything. Okay, be careful now, okay? Yeah. Yeah. We'll try. <laughs> we already lost one of our group. We don't need any. Oh, that's too bad. Really got arrested? Yeah. For what? Uh, Standing in the street. Yep. Trying to get off the street onto the sidewalk. Um, what was it? Was ushering us. Was yeah. it a was it a young male? Yeah. Named Robert? Huh? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Because I. Uh, I got, we, we got uh, somebody going in the back of a police van whose name was Robert. What was his last name? Anyway, they took him away for uh, basically standing on the corner. He wouldn't move. Yeah. We were being, so we were trying to move. Down, we still got to get down. to a part where we could reach sidewalk. And as we were walking, as the police instructed us to do, uh, a third yeah, we officer being ushered. We were being ushered by two police officers, and then a third one came in and just yanked him out. Huh. That was it. It was really bizarre. Yeah, well, they didn't. Uh, they just told me to move. Well, we have special rights when you're in a, a wheelchair, right? There's no such thing as lawyering or uh, blocking or anything like that because it's hard for people to move when they're disabled. So uh, you have a little more special consideration when you're under. That's part of the reason I brought my wheelchair out here was um, I don't need it so much anymore, but it comes in useful for things like that. Yeah. A lot it's my my seat. When I get back to San Francisco, I'm going to retire the wheelchair, and I'm going to get back on a bicycle again and start riding. Yeah, San Francisco's a perfect city for bicycle riding too. And uh, you no, know, I was riding 40, 50 miles a day. I was like, I was cut, right? When I was riding a bike, I was real cut. Right. You know, I weighed like 150 pounds. And I was lean, and I had like, I mean, I was like, I was in my 40s, and I could outrace kids that were teenagers, <laughs> right? With ease too, you know. And they were like, <sighs> you know, and all like sweaty and everything, you know. And I'm like, sitting there waiting. Come on, you know, you know, let's go, you know, let's let's move it, you know. So I hopefully I can get back to that point again. Good you know, I'm 52 now. I'm not as not as active as I used to be. Just wait. You're going to get old one day, too. <laughs> one day. One day. Maybe. Let's hope, right? <laughs> yeah, well, 50 is the new 40, well, and yeah, so on and so forth. Stay 19 for the rest of forever. <laughs> and I wish nice myself to meet you. All right. Yeah, very good to meet you. Okay, take care of yourself. Yeah, good luck with everything. Watch your step. Bye-bye. Nice to see young people out there. Yeah. You know, always encourage young people to uh, join social justice movements and whatnot. Do a little bit of service. I'm kind of of the belief that I really feel like a lot of the young people in, uh, in the United States, because when I was coming up, we had to face the draft. And that was always everybody's worst nightmare, was getting drafted into the military. And young people today, they don't have to worry about that so much. Um, usually most most young men and women join the military, volunteer, you know, it's all volunteer now. But back in the day, it wasn't. And uh, sometimes I wonder, I kind of feel like, like in Germany, they have a program where when you're uh, 17 years old, you have to spend a year in national service, which doesn't mean that you have to work for the army, but you have to do something to, uh, uh, you know, just uh, public service in Germany to serve the country. And it's mandatory, but you know, they give you like choices of all kinds of different things too. And I'm like, it would be nice if we had that kind of system here in the United States. Maybe not make it so like mandatory, but make all these options available to young people that there's all these public service things that you can do. And uh, myself, I went to Nicaragua with the Peace Corps. And uh, I had a wonderful experience there, I learned a lot. And that's what young people really need. They need to get into some kind of service. And I recommend it highly. So what's your name, anyway? What's that again? I'm sorry. Anthony. Have I met you before? No, no, I, it's another Anthony. My name's Clark. Clark. Right, this is my friend Zen. 
Oh, you're slow. What's your name? Oh shit. Hold on. What was that again? Jesse. Nesta. Nesta. Okay. Nice to meet you, Nesta. I come out of San Francisco. Yeah, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff today as well. Uh, our actions are slightly different. We're doing bank bank takeovers, and uh, which is really easy to do for people. All you have to do is get a little crowd of about between five and twenty people with picket signs and a bullhorn and maybe a long banner. Hang out in front of the bank, and it'll be closed within thirty minutes, right? And if you do that, you go from bank to bank. You can shut down a good number of banks in one day, right? Yeah, that was one of them that they were going to hit today. Uh, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is actually based out of San Francisco. We had a lot of good actions around because they had their uh, corporate shareholder meeting back in April, and uh, we shut them down. They thought that they were going to stop us from getting inside the shareholders meeting. That didn't happen. Uh, and we actually managed to get people in the shareholders meeting to disrupt the whole thing. And I actually saw the CEO of Wells Fargo out on the street watching all the stuff. And I couldn't get out. He got back inside to, before I could ask him a bunch of questions about, you know, how he felt about Occupy and, and about the fact that Wells Fargo uh, has received hundreds of billions of dollars worth of bailout money and how he could accept that money in good conscience when all the rest of the public services around the country have suffered as a result of the banksters not the bailout, you know, that we don't have money to pay for schools or education or, or law, even law enforcement or anything like that. And, uh, you know, you know, how does he feel about not paying his fair share in taxes, right? Because if the largest corporations would just pay their fair share in taxes, just pay your taxes. We're not asking for anything extra. Just pay your fair share well, then we'd be able to pay off, we'd be able to provide health services, there'd be universal health care for everybody. There would be everybody that wanted to go to college would be able to do so at low cost. Uh, just the whole, the whole thing, libraries would be renovated. There'd be public restrooms for people to use the bathrooms, right? Just all these, our infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, we could be repaved. And uh, instead of uh, privatized, in austerity moves so that's what the viewers out there know that they still haven't popped that pinata yet I think that I think they want to keep that pinata. It's kind of nice. Where are you guys from, anyway? Okay. A lot of Albany people here today. It's good. That's a pretty good size, though. Well, it's not New York, of course. You know, San Francisco is not New York. We've only got about a tenth as many people. Yeah, uh, Wall Street West. The yeah, Oakland's a little more radical to occupy there. But it's California. It's California. California. You're three hours ahead of us. Wait, no, we're three hours ahead of you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say uh, San Francisco is, uh, it's about five years ahead of New York. Five years. Socially, legally, technologically, environmentally. environmentally. Yeah. We're still destroying the environment out there on a, a place unmatched. Yeah. And I love California, but, you know, I need a break. I'm actually thinking about moving out here to New York. It's easy, well, it's easy for me. I'm lucky uh, because I get a government pension, and also I, uh, I do a lot of freelance work with computers, network security, web development. Yeah. So if I do relocate, it'll probably, 
I always have a leaning towards DC. I don't know why, but I like living down there. It's not quite as crowded as, as New York. Uh, the winters are not as hard in, in uh, DC. Um, well, I'm used to San Francisco winters. Uh, in San Francisco, it never goes below 32 degrees ever, right? It never snows, never freezes, except for when you get in the outlying areas. Um, I mean, the only thing we have that really natural it's might be considered to be day we have earthquakes, but uh, it's overrated. A lot of people, yeah, it's way overrated um, because most things are built in San Francisco to withstand an earthquake, and uh, actually they've over-engineered a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, they rebuilt that. They're rebuilding that. It's almost done. Yeah, I remember when that lady just drove right into that, right, killed herself because of it, right? All she had to do was hit the brake. Yeah. But uh, earthquakes are overrated, right? Yeah, I heard there was one before I got here. And then in D.C. they had a big earthquake. Yeah. Where it split the uh, Washington Monument. Sure. Were you on the wheelchair march earlier? No, no, I didn't go on the wheelchair march. No, I wish I'd have went if I would have. I would have went if I would have known about it. There's five of them in jail right now. Oh, for what? I think one of them's a good friend of mine. Okay. And what are they going to? Where were they at when they got arrested? You guys know? Oh, I don't know anything else. Just following the scene. Okay. Are you guys both out of Orlando? Originally, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Good to see you. I wanted to find out what the charge was. Did you go to the uh, Republican convention at all? Yes, I did. Actually, I, I went from Orlando to up here, and then it was to the convention, and then back up here. Okay. Cool. I'm not big on the state of Florida. Who is? My, uh, my parents go down there in the wintertime. And they got a little bungalow in a retirement community in Orlando. Right, so they spend the winters down there. They live in Baltimore. So. Alright, thank you. Yeah, Orlando, I remember Orlando. That's the city where they arrested uh, food not bombs for serving free food. Yeah, yeah. They tried to arrest me there. I started out protesting. And, and Orlando is also where we beat them for $200,000 in a Title 42 suit against them. Yeah, or chalking on the sidewalk. Oakland, they did the same thing. Yeah, LA, they beat the shit out of people down there for chalking the sidewalk. This guy stayed in jail. He won 40 grand, and it cost the city 160 grand to defend themselves. Oh, hey. Well, that's the way you. Um, uh, because uh, there's really no civilian oversight of police departments. I know. So the only way that you can really fight them is by taking them to court and winning judgments. And the more judgments you get against the police department, trust me, the more judgments you get against police departments, the things will change, right? Heads will roll and things will change. And that's why I'm a stickler on everyone not topping pleas. You don't get arrested to go in and say, okay, guilty, here's your money. You get arrested to go in there and fight the law. If you're fighting the law, that's why you're getting arrested. You go in there and you start saying, the plaintiff motions to dismiss the charges against the state your name. That's what I did in my jaywalking. And then, and then they look at you and, they, and then you sit there and you, can, you converse with the judge. Well, who's the plaintiff? Who's the injured party? It says here in Black's Law Dictionary, the plaintiff is the injured party, the person with the dispute. Who's the person that's been injured by my actions? Well, it's the state. Well, aren't I part of the state? Well, yeah, you're part of the state. Didn't, didn't Jefferson say in the Declaration of Independence that, that governments only get powers from the from the, you know, consent of the government? So you're going to have to stop us. I said, now I'm just trying to figure out, you know, who the plaintiff is here. Who's moving this court? I want to meet Mr. Florida. I want to meet the person that I hurt. And we had a conversation for a half an hour. Yeah. Let me tell you, then we went over the top. She didn't even rule on Three days later, she made a ruling. Guilty, but adjudicated with hell. You're guilty, but we're not going to say you're guilty. Ah, here we go. They're finally busting the piñata. I mean, you know.
Well, if you want to see if he's arrested, call up the NLG hotline. Yeah, it's like I'm My phone is about ready to die, though. Yeah, I hear you. I know. I, uh, I don't even want to post that. He got arrested. I've got like about two hours left to buy a battery. But we have another phone we're going to kick in. As soon as this one's dead. I gotta go buy a battery charger. I got too many batteries now. <laughs> My phone's always constantly charging batteries. So I think I'm gonna uh, I'll probably purchase a battery charger and then uh, that way I'll have. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed out. I bought that extra battery back that I bought. I'm like, I'm not gonna this. Oh, that's full. No, no, what you do is when you first get your cell phone, buy as many batteries as you can find for cheap because the price goes up on them after about a year. Oh, yeah. And you end up paying like $30 for each battery. Now I got a phone, you can't take the battery yeah. out. Okay, what kind do you have now? Droid 4. Okay. You can't take it out. I don't like that. I don't either. I don't like getting... I, I, I found out a few months. I was in D.C. and I was falling asleep and, and it started to rain and my phone was in the rain and got wet so I had to go get a new phone. And I fought, 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 fought against these smart phones. And I was like, yeah, I don't try, you know? And like after a couple of weeks, I was like, you know, this thing sucks. You know, but I thought it was cool because I could do all those neat things like, you know, like you're doing right now and, you know, you know, posting right there in the live time and stuff. But man, when I found out that battery didn't come out, I was PO'd. It was like three weeks into the thing and I'm like, I'm out. I can't return it now. They want to take it back. I, 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 I did that. I did that. Two days, a day and a half. Then, no, this, it works for some. This, yeah, sometimes it works. Yeah, yeah. I've done it before and it hasn't worked. Yeah. That time it didn't work. Kind of bummed out. I want a Samsung S3 Galaxy. Yeah, that, that's kind of like. But I can't use it with my sir. I'm on Metro PCS, um, and they're unlimited. They have the cheapest yeah. unlimited plan. Yeah. I have I have a beef with Samsung, and I will not buy any Samsung products. Huh. I had a little beef with a microwave. Well, I have an LG Steam, and I, it's, it works all right. You know, and the thing was recalled, and it was recalled, and it got recalled for what it blew up. Yeah. And so they were like, you know, we're going to fix it. Yeah. And they wanted to charge me for certain parts. And I'm like, it's your fault. You know, it's, you guys didn't design it. You know? But I'm happy with uh, my service, generally. I'm, I'm happy with my service. It's just my phone sucks. And then I went and bought a, a mobile hotspot, which is a worthwhile investment. Yeah. Well, it helps you. If you get the clear, right, the clear hotspot, um, it's WiMAX. So it allows you to go into buildings, and you can go in and live stream like a lot deeper inside of a building when you're on Wi-Fi. Because um, uh, when your your forgery service only probably penetrates maybe into one room, and like when you get to the back of that room, you start to lose your signal. So I'm experimenting with it, you know. I'll see how it works out. Yeah, and if it works out well enough, I'm actually thinking about canceling my uh, my cable service, my cable modem, with Comcast, and uh, just using the hotspot. Yeah, if somebody gets arrested today, they probably won't be released until tomorrow morning. Well. It depends. Like in San Francisco, when somebody gets arrested at a demestration, they generally will, will book them and release them right on the spot. Ah, uh, we're getting a little more excited here. We've got balloons that are being released. Hey Zen, you ready to move? Yeah. All right. There's Zen, my helper. Oh, 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 100%. He's been helping me get around today. We're occupied 100% by the way. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move along. I want to get some. I want to get some crowd shots. And then we'll, we'll, we'll like we'll do like one of these. We'll go here. And here. I want to get a picture of all the police too. Ah, uh, pardon, like a 
Yenna Bebei. Yeah, forgive me, guys. I've been up for the last two days. I haven't got much sleep. So uh, if I tend to babble on a little bit, that's because I haven't slept enough. Uh, we got some, uh, tons of cops out here, as you can see. Oop. Tons of times. Like, let's see if I can even give an accurate count on how many police are out here today. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. My guess is about 85, 90 cops out here. Just on this side of the Maybe 100. Park. That's just, just on this side of the park. All right, we're going to move over to the other side of the park. We'll see how many cops are over there. I guess there's over 10,000 officers on the New York City Police Department. So there's no shortage of cops that they can call in here. Yeah, the street has uh, tons of police cars. Yeah. Got all kinds of police vehicles out there, folks. But uh, we're, for right now, we're safe and sound. And uh, we're going to do our best not to get arrested so we can continue to, to provide quality live streaming for you, the viewer. Because we love you, and that's why we're out here, is because we love you, and we'll do anything that we can to help out. Occupy Philly, all right. So, all right, let's hold up here for a second. Let's see what people are doing. Um, where are you at? Nah, it's just fine. We're getting ready to move. We can tell people are kind of getting ready to move. I feel the energy. So far, there's been a limited amount of arrests. I would guess that maybe 25, 30 people have been arrested today out of our crowd of maybe 2,000. So it would be nice if we had 200,000 people down here, but unfortunately, we got to get you down here. If you're uh, in your city and you're near a local Occupy, go online, find out what they're doing. I know in San Francisco that we have uh, a lot of bank takeovers today. Uh, we're also at the Financial District in San Francisco at 555 California Street. So if you're in San Francisco, do make an appearance. We need you. We need you to come down and we need you to participate in occupying our demonstrations. Uh, because if you don't do it, people like me, I can't do it by myself. So come down and participate. Don't be afraid. The only thing you have to fear is yourself. All right, we're going to cut down here for a second. I'm going to do a little reconnaissance and see if we have any police officers. Thank you for your legal observing. We have a lot of legal observers out here. You know, just go up to the corner and just check out and see how many cops are up there. And Sorry. Never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> NYPD you ought to get one of them shirts, I swear to God. Oh, those are good. So people do cooperate with the police department. We're not out here seeking confrontation with the police department. Because that's not where the story is. The story is about the Wall Street bankers who have been ripping off the American public now endlessly uh, since at least the 1950s, taking your money and uh, keeping it for themselves and uh, what little money you have now, they want your house, they want your savings, they want everything. So uh, beware, but the story is not about confronting the police, the story is about Wall Street. So don't forget it. Um, you know, even though I make it, that's a distraction. They're trying to change the conversation to be about a street confrontation, protesters against 
police, police against protesters, and then we lose sight of the, oh, it's the people against the banks. Oh, that, I forgot. Right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Where are you from New York? Jamaica, Queens. Jamaica, okay. Absolutely. And your name is? Tom Hillgardner. Nice to meet you, Tom. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Clark. 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 I'm visiting from San Francisco. Oh, good. Oh, God bless you for coming all that distance. Oh, I Jamaica, waited. We need everybody. I waited a whole year to come, to come out here. But it's, this is a very powerful protest, and I actually feel that so far it's been a success. I missed the morning activities. I didn't get here until around 10.30. Yeah, there was a few arrests. Obligations. Yeah, I heard. But Warm nothing. In a stupid suit. <laughs> yeah, but nothing major, and and uh, uh, a lot of people got arrested for tossing uh, casino chips, right? And then uh, a few people got arrested just for standing and not moving when the police told them to move. And they told me to move and stuff, but you know, I'm in a wheelchair. I kind of get it like uh, I get a, a pass, right? You know, I've seen them arrest people in wheelchairs, but. But they, they definitely slows them down and makes them think twice, and they're really going to do you last, and why do we really have to do this? Right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get the feeling that a lot of these officers, they don't want to be here. Yeah, right. Uh, well, you know what? I have a conversation with I'm an attorney. Right. I have a conversation with them about, like, the law, and really whose side they're on, and what, what laws they're enforcing. Like, over in Sakati Park, right? Right. I had a conversation with a cop over there. He's wearing a blazer. It says NYPD legal. I was like, oh, you're just the guy I wanted to see. Can you tell me, you know, there's a city planning commission regulation right. that says the design of Zuccotti Park, Zuccotti Park as a public plaza must be designed so that 60% of the plaza that's adjacent to the sidewalk must be open for egress. So it's an open space. So they've throttled that all down to two entrances with these barricades. The barricades are owned by Brookfield Properties. So I said to them, well, why are you enforcing them breaking the City Planning Commission regulations? And he said to me, well, we're unaware of that City Planning Commission regulation. It's NYPD legal. I said, I guarantee you Ray Kelly is not oblivious to that City Planning Commission regulation, and he just doesn't care. You guys are taking the attitude of let them bring a lawsuit. But I'll tell you, you know, if I had a common driveway with my neighbor and I parked my car a little over too far to the side and my neighbor didn't like it and he called the police and wanted to press trespassing charges, they'd tell him, hey, that's a private matter. Go to court if you have a problem with this person's conduct. And they should be doing the same thing to Brookfield Properties. You don't like what these people are doing? They're taking apart your barricades and ignoring the fact that you've erect, arrested, uh, erected them and only created two entrances? If they don't want to enter your entrances and they breach the barricades at another point, go to court. But no, the police are enforcing it with the power of the trespass statute. Meanwhile, meanwhile the park has signs all over it, open to the public. Is it open to the public if when I enter it, except through your little two entry points that you want? Of course not. You know this. So, finish my sentence. <laughs> what kind of law do you practice? I actually do landlord tenant. Okay. So that's like right up my alley because you know it's property, real property. Mm. Yeah, I'm an organizer for tenants in where I live in San Francisco. So we're getting ready to file a lawsuit for ADA uh, violations. I mostly do a tenant side practice. Um, of you know we have this law in New York rent stabilization. We also have this law loft law, mm. and I represent tenants um, with particular problems. It's a real niche practice. It is not the most lucrative practice. It makes me the money I need to get by. Well, it pays the bills, right? Barely. I mean, if, if, as long as you don't go on vacation for five or six years. Okay, well, that's not so bad. But it's, it, well, you know, if you love what you do, you don't need vacation. No. No, as I'm here, I'm a... Going to work is a pleasure. I'm the same way. I like doing what I do. I like live streaming and coming out, you know. And I'm in a position now where I don't have to work, so I had a real job if I don't want to, so it's nice. Right. Right? I'm self-employed, right. so I, I set my own hours, well, within limitations, like this so do you morning accept, it could be. Are you accepting new clients or anything yeah, like yeah. that? You want to uh, give out your contact information online? Or, or you don't have any cards? Lying. You know, I, I left my... I left. Do you have a URL that people could be referred to? No. Okay. No. I just... Uh, and your name? My name's Tom Hillgardner. T J H I L L G A R D N E R dot at, at Verizon.net. That's my email. Okay, Tom Hillgardner at Verizon.net.
So if you're uh, need a New York attorney, a uh, state of New York, I would imagine. But yeah, mainly, right. that's what I do. Right. I'm okay. admitted in Connecticut, but I don't really practice there. Okay. So if you need a lawyer here in New York, this is the landlord tenant law. If, uh, if you're a tenant. Right. Tenant. You have to be a tenant. Oh, there you go. Yeah, my uh, I have an attorney on retainer, and he he takes tenant cases. I actually do a little, the tiniest little bit of landlord work when you're two family house. Yeah, that's different. Right. Exactly. So great. It's always good. We always need more uh, lawyers for the for the little people. All right, Clark, All right it's, it's good talking to you, man. Take care. Yeah, good you have a great day. Your time here. Oh, I'm having a great time. Right. Thanks. This, is, yeah. this is an yeah. adventure. Yeah, Tom. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Let's go up here. I want to check out more police lines. Yeah. Okay. She's probably wondering what the hell happened to you. Why don't you call Ari up from here? I'm gonna I'm gonna hang here for a minute. How you doing? <laughs> lots and lots of people here. I guess our crowd is about 900, 800, 900 people maybe. Wish you were down here in New York City. Come down to Battery Park at the very tip of Manhattan and come join us. We need your support and your help. That place look pretty relaxed. Everybody seems to be pretty relaxed today. It's a gorgeous day here in uh, New York City. It's about 70 degrees. We got a nice breeze blowing off the ocean, and uh, it's all good. Um, we're going to be here and then we're not going to go to Brooklyn, we're going to do other things all day or? Nah, when we're done here, I'm going back, I want to go back to go Brooklyn, to yeah. Okay, so either we go there and then, so, um, two things, what do you think, a couple of hours? I'm free tomorrow all day. No, no, but I'm saying, uh, she could meet me here in the city or I could go back there. It's and up then, to you. Okay, well, how long are you here more for, do you think? We're going to be here until about three or four. Oh, okay. Three. So, yeah, so this, this is still going on. More, more contingent of people are coming down. We've got another big but, uh, so Statue of Liberty there. It looks real nice. Uh, we got a kind of a festive atmosphere out here. Things have settled down a little bit. So, uh... Hold on a second, folks. I got this burning pain in my elbow. Hold on. Weird. I guess uh, rheumatoid arthritis is like I'm sorry for shaking the camera, people. Well, I keep running into that same undercover cop all the time. He kind of gives me the willies. I'd never want to run into him in a dark alley one night. I was just dumping my garbage. I feel comfortable. I feel just like sitting here. As long as nothing's going on, I'm not gonna like. Let's just relax. Yeah, I'll have her come in and you know, meet us. How's she then, doing? She's not going to bring the baby, is she? Well, she has to, right? Yeah. All right, well, later though, right? Nothing really good. By the time she's waking up, so by the time she gets over here, she'll be, you know. Okay, it'll be later. Maybe by the time we okay. go over. Probably around 3 or 4 o'clock. So either, uh, 
I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, we could either... She could meet us here, or by the time she's ready to come, yeah. we we're going to be going over there. And okay. I, I could pick her up, and then... Well, either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll just, see, My I'll plan. just play with her, and then if anything, I mean, um... You know, I could go in with you, or worst case scenario, she's already over here. You could just go crash. Cause yeah, because that's exactly where I'm, I'm headed. You're going to crash. To so. get a good meal and then go to bed. Yeah, so you could take care of that yourself yeah. in the worst case uh -huh. scenario. Mm -hmm. I mean, best case scenario, she's already here and you can just take off. So. Okay. Either way. So, you know, it's been a little time with her. Occupy baby. <laughs> I hear you. You got to do that. No, and it's great that this is um, Moon Day because it goes with Occupy the Moon. You know, it's like uh, we take things on all different levels. Hey, Jatel. Hey, Jatel. Hey, Jatel. Nice yeah, name, Jatel. J apostrophe T A O. Jatel. If you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me. Hey. Good to see you again, man. Hey, how you doing? I've been treating your shit. I right, know, thank been, you. I keep dropping. Like, I can't keep my bandwidth going around here. Oh, that sucks. Sad trucks or what? Huh. But one, one of my pictures of an arrest from this morning made it onto the RT. Oh, cool. All right. So I'm in Russia today. You're a big star. That was, uh, that was Punk Boy and SF. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, at Punk Boy and SF. Uh, you can Google him, and his Ustream should come up. And he's a San Francisco live streamer. Uh, he goes out. He's very active. It's good to see him too. Much love to, much love to Chital. Chital. So. I'm actually glad my shit doesn't make it into. Like, I don't. I don't know. I'm not, see, I'm not really doing it. I don't do this for personal gain or, like I tell you, for validation or anything like that. I do it because I love to do it. It really doesn't matter how many people are watching. I'm going to be there anyway kind of thing, right? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's easier for me to handle. If I started becoming, like, more of an international or national thing, eh, I'm not really ready for that yet. I think I want to get my other website up and get the app running before I really start pushing it. And then... I'll really start pushing the envelope. When I have my own server and my own, you know, my own app, well, then it'll be, I'll be a lot, a lot more active. Well, you know, like, uh, yeah, however you want. Also, also, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a different platform, but you know, may, uh, the thing with Paul is that he gains access to a lot of different like press coverage things, stuff like that. He still has to be on the good news platform, but it's just about wording, you know, instead of talk, this, that, whatever. Um, but then you could get into the middle of like the journalistic discussions of like. Many well, then I can get a press pass, a New York City press pass from. Him. Yeah, like from him. I mean, it's not even that. It's not about the New York City press pass because he has connections for 30 years of press. So it's not just official. It's just about friendships. Right. You know, roundtable discussions, private events, dinner table things. Um, so it's you know it's worth building uh, some sort of relationship there. Um, and I'm sure he would, you know, would be really interested in hosting you if, if potentially you guys okay. sync with uh, media. Because I do a lot of writing too, so. Cool, yeah. yeah. And, and having an outpost in San Francisco where the good news is circulating. You know, these are all things that I know he's interested in. You guys right. have to work it out, though. Yeah, I'll work something out. Yeah. I'm going to make it by the office, like, tomorrow or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. right. I got a funny feeling tomorrow I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, sleeping. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be worn out. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I it's going to take a, a break, and then we'll, we'll set things up for the Thursday little soiree at Earth Matters. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. And then I got to go back down to. I got to go back. I got to go to Baltimore. Yeah. I got to spend two days in Baltimore. Saturday and Sunday, I was kind of planning on. And then back to DC on Monday. And then I'm out of town on Tuesday. I'm leaving. So. Yeah. Well. A short visit. <laughs> I'll probably leave here on Friday, Friday morning, so I can get down to DC. Or Baltimore. Friday, yeah, I spend Friday night and Saturday night in Baltimore, and then Sunday and Monday in DC, and then leave and go back to San Francisco. Or even, uh, I mean, you know, however you want, that, if you, even if Thursday night you want to leave, you just think it's more like early as something. Right, well, we'll work something out. I'm all good.
I got a new sticker for my laptop. That's where I'm going to put that one sticker that we got today. Needs it. Not on my brand brand new one, but on my my secondary laptop. My brand brand new one's got that nice aluminum case. On I need it. a brand 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 new uh, Mac. Uh, what's wrong with your What's wrong with your one now? It looks like it was working properly. The DVD doesn't work. Yeah, you don't need that. Oh no, well, it was needing it. It's good to have so I can play DVDs, access television, whatever. You know. Dude, I got 500 gigs worth of all kinds of shit. Right. And then. Uh, I, have, I mean, I got I like. Have repairs to do. You know, I, I, got, I need to put a thousand dollars into, or two thousand dollars if I get a Mac, yeah. into technology to get up to level. Well, uh, before you make any purchases, let me know. Right. Um, I picked mine up for five hundred and fifty dollars, yeah, and it has you no know, the the HP that I'm using, the one that we were using last night. Uh, it's got sixteen gigs of memory. Uh, You're not gonna find a laptop with sixteen gigs of memory. Max, the most they put out is eight. And you don't. It doesn't ship with eight. It ships with four, and you have to buy the extra memory to have it installed. Yeah. Whereas mine came with 16 when I bought it, and it has a quad core chip and 750 megabyte or gigabytes. You one of those four two four. Yeah, save your money. You don't need a Mac. They're not that much better. And I have all the software you need anyway. I'm actually kind of kind of like. Uh, Surprised that they're letting us keep these styrofoam the barricades. Boy, I'm fading past. My legs are killing me. My back's bugging me. Oh, I keep hearing a lot of police chatter behind me. Better turn my back around. Oh, just a lot of chatter. So I'll figure I'll hang out by the police department. That way I can hear what's going on. Hey guys, good today. Yeah, I'm getting kind of whipped. Whipped, whipped, whipped. Oh. Oh, I wish I would have slept yesterday more. But I had to come down. I wanted to get some... I wanted to go down to Foley Square yesterday and cover the... Uh, what was happening there, so... It was worth it. Lots of wonderful activists out here. Uh, it comes from all over the country. Come here to Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street. Uh, I'm really happy that they're here. We have a fairly good crowd. The numbers aren't as much as I would like to see, but you know, I like to see 100,000 people. And I know that's possible. How do we get 100,000 people to New York City to to participate in Occupy Wall Street? And I am the belief that. Uh, we need to uh, hammer home the uh, bread and butter issues of mortgage foreclosure, of lack of health benefits, education, uh, anti-austerity, and uh, if we can hammer home those bread and butter issues, uh, we'll have more of a chance of reaching the American public. So remember that, and uh, at one point I'm going to do some live streaming of conversations with normal people away from the demonstrations and I'll show you that when you talk to people that uh, we can pretty much drive home our message very quick. Fiduciary responsibility is a contradiction. Exotic instruments are financial WMDs 
stop reckless gambling with their money. No doubt. I, I get the feeling that the banksters uh, treat Wall Street as kind of like your private casino. So it's not any more different than uh, plunking down some money on some chips. You'd have better luck at the roulette table than you would at making investments in Wall Street. And uh, so, yeah, I came out here from San Francisco. Uh, I was just in San Francisco a couple months ago. Why I don't move to that city? Hit me on the head. It's expensive. Is it really? It's more expensive than here. Is it really? 700,000 yeah. people out there. Yeah, we can, you can have all the money in San Francisco and you still won't be able to find the right house. It's, it's like, like $2 million is like the average price for a home in San Francisco, right? Grateful, Ridiculous. The Grateful Dead Center, I always people say, what do you think of New York? I've been born and raised here. I say the best line I ever heard about New York City was by the Grateful Dead. It's got the ladies and knees, but it just won't let you be. Right. <laughs> I mean, they nailed it with that. Yeah, and I, you know, I managed to find low-cost housing, but, uh, Philadelphia, I, Philadelphia's a nice town, they'll let you be there, Yeah, yeah, I, I've been living in San Francisco so long that it, it comes easy for me, right? You know, as a, it takes about a year for newcomers to get established in San Francisco. You got it so good that you're not letting everybody know how good it is. Nah, nah. <laughs> Now we have one thing. Whatever you do, don't tell them it's our company. Keep them out. <laughs> well, we invite everybody to come and get their medical cannabis. Right? We're the capital. Right, I guess we let's go down and do here. Let's just do a little circulation for people so they can see all the great and beautiful occupiers that are brave, bravely confronting Wall Street. These people have a lot of courage. And you know me, I have a lot of courage, and I'm an occupier. And uh, I'm not scared. And you shouldn't be either. You know, let's act out of some bravery. Let's be brave. Let's take some responsibility for not only yourself, but also for other people. And remember that when you're an occupier and you're in an occupy protest, you're not representing just yourself, but you're representing all the hundreds of thousands of people out there in America today that are facing mortgage foreclosures, uh, students that are having to take out these exorbitant loans just so they can go to college. Uh, where uh, our health care system, uh, people that don't get adequate health care, and that uh, that needs to happen here in this country. And if the largest corporations would just pay their fair share in taxes, well, then we would have money for all these things instead of privatization and anti or austerity. Mark. Right? What's going on hey, here? Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing? Question. Yes, ma'am. How's it going? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you need a power wheelchair? No, I'm fine. Oh, I'm just about out of this wheelchair. If you really want to know the truth, I'm very. I'm. i like. I spent two years purposely not getting a power chair because this gets me going, right? And I can get up and walk about a block, right? I uh, shattered my leg, right? You can see the tibia didn't heal up properly, or didn't set properly, and I have a rod in my leg. Oh. Oh, okay, I see. So if you know anybody needs it, we'd be good, willing to let it go for gas money to Charlotte. Oh, yeah, I wish I could help you. I, I had to live in San Francisco, so there's no way I could get it on the plane. But I would buy it from you, believe it or not, if I could figure out how to ship it, but I don't really it need it. part. It comes in two pieces. The bottom part, mm -hmm. and then this it's comes It's the weight, off. the weight of it. Gotcha. All right. Uh, and besides, but, like, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, when I get back, I'm buying a, I got a bicycle waiting for me. I'm getting back on the bicycle again, right? Because I have to lose the rest of this tub. All right, well, if I hear of anybody, how are we getting in contact with you? Um, you want my phone number? Yeah, sure. 704? Okay, well, I can't. I don't have any way of recording it right now because I'm, I'm on live stream. Uh, um, Nate, do you have a pen and paper? Want to write our oh, you know what? down for him? Hey, could you get a, um, those, the, uh, I got a, uh, a Sharpie in there. And we could write it. We got a Sharpie. You got a Sharpie? So you guys are from San Francisco? Well, I am, yeah. He, I, I met Zan. He's from... I'm in New York here. Right. He lives in New York. Here you go. We're, we're from Charlotte. Charlotte? Yeah. Cool, great. Yeah, I saw a lot of Charlotte on the live streams. I'm getting back to Charlotte. Oh, you'll make it back. <laughs> so, you know what? Just be... Uh, have a little faith. And uh, a little belief in the powers of the universe. And you'll make happen. it back. 
Oh, it'll happen. Absolutely. Right? The powers of the universe made it possible for me to come here. Yeah, you know? we got here. And, uh, you know, you got to make sure you have a round trip ticket. You guys drove up here, so. We drove up. Yeah, yeah there's no way. 12 hours, we made it. Yeah, there's no way. Okay, so I'll have, uh, if I know of anybody, I'll let them know. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Appreciate and, it. And uh, thanks for coming down here from Charlotte. My name's Clark. Clark, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So good luck. Thanks. You, too. All righty. Take care. Oh, you, too. Yeah, if I was in San Francisco, I would have bought that in a heartbeat. Uh, you're selling our electric chair. But I don't want to. I don't really want to take her chair. I feel kind of bad about it, to be quite honest. They're gonna play a little bit later. This is our, our friend Mark. Uh, okay. And what does he play? He plays guitar. He keeps down the whole like Sunday, you know, acoustic okay. uh, bands going yeah, out of Central Park, going out of different. Uh, that goes in the bag. That's a number. In your bag. Yeah. We're still having mood. We're still. Here at the uh, Battery Park in Lower Manhattan, uh, we haven't really made a move. I'm wondering if we're going to have a march or something. I'm a little delirious from lack of sleep, but uh, I'm going to stay here as long as my battery's hold out. I've already been live streaming for about five hours now. I want to be, and just getting paid enough to like be able to go out every day and do, you know, this New York, there's tons of things, I mean, there's, yeah. you know, even yeah, if I people never. throw down a little bit of money for me to get around every day to do this, it would be very important, really easy, and it saves a lot of time, because before, one hour of uh, production, you know, required like five hours of post-production to get, you know, capture stuff, get it online, edit it, stuff like that, and, you know, I'd rather do five hours of content. Um, straight up, you know, yeah, it takes me for every hour I do live streaming. It takes me about three hours worth of uh, preparation. preparation. Yeah. yeah. So if I live stream for six hours, that means it's eighteen hours worth of preparation. Yeah. And now you know why I'm not getting any sleep. Yeah. Any word from uh, Ahmed? Oh yeah, he texted me. That's right. Yeah. He should be. Uh, Mark, meet my friend uh, Clark. How you doing? Hi, man. Mark Crystal. Nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, Not bad. He's an uh, old-time friend over in uh, San Francisco. San Francisco, and he was one of the main uh, coordinators of uh, the MMM Million Mile on a March. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, all that kind of. Uh, I've been an activist for 41 years. I think like that every Wednesday we do a gig. Open mic. Oh yeah, that's right. I've, uh, Where do you have your open mic set? Gilly Cafe. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was there last night. Were the uh, stages of Occupy? That was really good. I live streamed it and everything. And uh, I'm glad to see the place is doing all right. Um, I don't want to get involved in any chatter because I got viewers here. But uh, we're gonna we're hoping for Dana to be able to be released pretty soon. Uh, he's not really of good health. Um, he still needs a quad bypass. Oh, they already did one. Yeah. Okay, because he's. Um, I've been reading stuff on the uh, Facebook of uh, on his site, Free Dana Bill, Free Ourselves. Heard it cost the state like ninety thousand dollars for his operation there, so they might get rid of it. Yeah, well, at least he's got it. Um, Could have gotten it easier. All I had to do was come to San Francisco. Yeah. We have universal health care for residents, but in San Francisco, it doesn't matter. When I shattered my leg, uh, I was fully. Everything was fully taken care of by the city of San Francisco. Yeah, I walked out. I walked away from about a six-figure hospital bill. Wow. So I'm grateful to the city of San Francisco. Definitely more progressive out west than out here. Yeah. Out west out. Yeah, we're about five years ahead on most most social things. Yeah. But New York's a great city, and I love it here. I'm thinking about moving here. Actually, making this more of a maybe not full-time, but a part-time home because um, you know I'm a I'm a you know, I don't like to, I'm not arrogant, I don't like to blow my own horn, but I'm a highly skilled organizer. And I know how to motivate people and get people up, and I know how to organize, and, and how to, like, uh, get people, you know, the, all the basic things that you do when you're organizing, getting people to show up, well, making sure people follow through with what they say they're going to do, you know, that kind of thing. When you do it at the Yippie Cafe, because I'm going to say there's some political speaking and some music, live music, and protest songs, and, and it, just since Dana's not there, it's kind of tough without a real leader. 
Right. But then David Peel tries, and the fine man, Yaron Kay, is like, you know. Yeah, he's, I saw him today. He was out here. Yeah. Yeah. David Peel's yeah, yeah. Occupy Man. Yeah. Occupy Man. Yeah, just a second here. Hey, I'm going to shut off the, uh, the sound here for a second, because I'm going to have to talk about some personal issues. Doesn't like anybody. It's kind of dead out here. We're well, not dead, but everybody's kind of sitting around. I'm wondering if there's going to be any more marches or anything. Um, I haven't checked my Twitter. Because I've been a lot. I got a couple of uh, texts. See, if we were in San Francisco, we'd be smoking up right now. That's what we were talking about. I like our five minutes. Hey, brother. How are you doing? You mind talking to me for sure, a few sure. moments? Sure, sure. How you guys doing this afternoon? Doing yourself? Very good. Can I stay out of trouble today? Uh, <laughs> I have a responsibility. I'm a live streamer. Okay. And uh, one of the reasons I'm here is to... Uh, uh, protect people that are demonstrating um, and uh, actively record uh, and live stream the police activities to make sure people don't get no, no. beaten up or whatnot or people that get arrested we get their names so what we know what's going on and also to provide my viewers out there with information about Occupy Wall Street and what's going on here. Talk to me about the police actions uh, over the last year. I mean, um, is, it, well, is it something that you expected? Was it surreal? I mean, uh, I didn't think that it would be as heavy-handed 
as it is because um, I live in San Francisco and I go to demonstrations of live streaming. And most demonstrations have maybe one or two cops, right, just there, just basically to safeguard for people's traffic. And uh, when there's Occupy protest in San Francisco, it seems like there's two police officers for every occupier. Um, coming here to New York, it's very much the same way. Uh, New York and San Francisco police departments are basically use the same kind of tactics because the cities are very similar in geography, you know, in physical geography. Uh, now, I've been over to Oakland and Occupy Oakland, and the police there are really off the hook. But uh, there is a, uh, there was, uh, the orders to suppress the Occupy movement come directly from the Obama White House and the Oval Office. Uh, there's lots of documentation to prove that. And there was actually a meeting of mayors from around the country that was organized by Homeland Security and uh, uh, to uh, find ways the cities were dealing with the Occupy movement. And right after that, they had that meeting with Homeland Security, that's when you saw the different police departments from around the country move into Occupy. Uh, as far as today with police officers, I've seen people arrested for doing as little as throwing uh, casino chips in the middle of the street. I've seen people arrested for merely standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, so most of the charges, most of the people here, the charges aren't going to stick anyway. But it's just a way of the police to intimidate people and to try and uh, uh, scare potential of people that would be interested in participating in this activity uh, from coming to New York. Right? What's your name, bro? Uh, my name is Clark Sullivan. Clark Sullivan? Clark Sullivan. You can uh, Google me, Freeman Sullivan, on, on Google, and then all my information comes up. Okay. Lots and lots of it. All right, Clark. All right, and Please your name is, sir? Gary. Gary, Gary. And you're with right. Press TV? Yeah. Okay, great, right, great, great. Day, man. You too. Too. So I do all right? Little interview. That's um, they're Iranian uh, sponsored. Yeah. Iranian. Yeah. Unlike RT, they do a really. Yeah. Hey, what do you guys think? Is there going to be a war with Iran after the elections? Yeah, because I know that uh, Netanyahu he's pressing Obama, and Obama doesn't want to meet with Netanyahu. Right. Right. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but we'll see what happens. you know. It's not about him. It's about the lobby. Right. It's about the, it's about APAC. You know. So maybe he can go himself. So well, it's what APAC does over here that puts the lid. Okay. It's the heart of what he does. He plays with it. All right. Thanks. All right. Uh. I always try to provide you with information. Personally, you heard it here first. There will be uh, some kind of action in the Middle East around Iran right after Election Day or right now, or within a week or two after it. Uh, either Israel or NATO or some form of the U.S. military is going to be over there, and we'll see what happens. At any rate, the only people that are really going to pay are the civilians, innocent civilians, uh, over in Iran. That really had nothing to do with any kind of nuclear program or anything like that at all. So, be prepared for war. Uh, it keeps the economy going, folks. And right now, with the economy at a standstill, the likelihood of war grows ever greater because it keeps the industrial age economy going. It doesn't keep the space age economy going, which is what we're trying to transition into. Okay, folks. Um, unfortunately, my battery power has run out. And I'm going to let Zen here uh, tell you about his live stream and to let you know what his URL is um, because he has a fresh battery in his phone. And uh, we're going to set him up so he can live stream for you and uh, you'll get a different perspective from him. And so would you let us know, let the viewers out there know what your uh, URL is, just repeat it slowly so people can write it down or whatever. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Twitter is uh, at Race uh, for the Earth. Uh, then uh, on Facebook, uh, here at uh, Star Horizon Media. Uh, and what's your uh, Ustream URL? Ustream is uh, Star Horizon. Uh, it's uh, Earth Dance New York City Cosmoplex. Okay, so that would be uh, Ustream.tv slash channel yeah. slash Earthstream. Earth, Earth Dance Earth New York Dance. City Cosmoplex. 
uh, Earth Dance and New York City. Is NYC. that all one word? No, NYC. Earth, yeah, it's uh, spell uh, it for the spell it for the audience. Uh, Earth Dance, NYC, Cosmoplex. Hyphenate each one of those words. Okay, so okay, so why don't you spell it out? E A R T H D D A N C E N Y C C O S M P L E X. Okay, there you go, folks. So get on UStream and uh, and you'll be able to find his stream. He's going to get ready to stream here in a couple minutes. Okay. I'm sorry I have to let you go. I'd love to be able to keep live streaming, but my batteries are gone. Solar Bloom, Occupy the Moon. Uh, so, uh,. Go to uh, my friend Zen's live stream. It's what was it again? Um, Earth dance. Earth dance NYC. Cosmoplex. Cosmoplex. Okay, well, this is Freeman Sullivan. If you want to tweet me or let me know of anything in the future, uh, do get a hold of me. Um, I love you all out there. Thanks for supporting my live stream and watching. And I will probably do some live streaming in the next day or two. So thanks a lot and good afternoon.